Hey, okay, welcome. We're, we're in the lab here today, and uh, let's see if I can count. This will be lab number seven, and uh, so we're doing um, the uh, ideal gas law, also called the air thermometer. So uh, go ahead and uh, turn to page 55 in your, in your lab manual, and you'll see there at the top it says the air thermometer. And let me talk a little bit about it before we get started, but uh, as we get started, I want to point out that I have one, two, three, and four baths. Uh, this is where I'm going to put our little experiment. Um, this is how we're going to test the ideal gas law, this little apparatus. And uh, give you an idea, this up here is a pressure gauge and uh, down here is a little container uh, with a valve that I can open to let molecules in and out. Although as we run the experiment, I'm going to leave it closed so that the uh, number of molecules doesn't change. But this allows me to dunk this into the coldest bath. This is dry ice. Um, right now it is at a temperature of about a negative 62, 63. Uh, we'll measure that one accurately. It'll be a little colder by the time we actually collect some data. Um, over here, this is just regular ice water. Uh, I can't really pull that one up. That's way too cold. But this is just your regular ice water. And I got a thermometer which says zero degrees. We'll check it. It'll probably stay at zero degrees the whole time. Uh, this one is a little bath that is at 21 degrees Celsius. And it'll probably stay there, but we'll just do a check on it. Uh, in a face-to-face -face setting, we usually have so many students that the temperature will change a little bit and I tell the students to be careful after, you know, so many people came in. But for me, it's just going to be one, so I don't see the temperature changing much. And then this last one is the boiling water and uh, I'll be a little careful with it and, and I got a lot of water there so it won't boil away. But uh, it's a... Um, going to be at 100 degrees Celsius. So those are our three different baths. And so before I get uh, started, let me just talk about the ideal gas law that we just finished in lecture. And so if you didn't get a chance to see all of the lecture of chapter 11, do that first. And one of the things you'll see near the end is this. You'll see that uh, the ideal gas law, PV equals to NRT, was uh, one of our discussions here. Uh, I'm going to rearrange it and let me just turn to the graph, make sure I rearrange it uh, the right way. Uh, your author likes to put temperature by itself, okay, so there's temperature by itself. Uh, then likes to put uh, volume, uh, number of molecules, or really the number of moles, divided by N, and then uh, pressure. And if you look closely at our experiment, as I just was, was showing you, uh, we could write this, and I'll write it as mx plus b. Uh, that's the mathematical equation for a line. And if we think of then the slope as being volume over number of molecules and r, and we think of x as being the pressure reading, and according to this equation, there is no intercept. This little equation then is saying that the ideal gas law is, is simply saying this. That if you were to plot pressure on the x-axis and temperature on the y-axis, which is what we're going to be doing after we collect some data, this is saying the ideal gas law should give you... <laughs> A straight line. So one of the things that I hope we will see as we collect the data here is a confirmation of the ideal gas law. That is, there is a linear relationship between the temperature and the pressure. And so going through our bath, I'll hold up the equipment again. It's why I have different baths. Those are different temperatures. And that's why I have a pressure gauge so that I can then have uh, and record, measure and record the different pressures. So that's our goal, like I said, is to confirm the ideal gas law. But in addition to that, we could actually find absolute zero. So that's another part of this puzzle. Uh, like I said in the lecture part, is this is a neat little lab that was done by uh, Calvin early on so we could find what the value is of absolute zero. And as we said in class, 
Uh, absolute zero is the point where the molecules stop moving. And that's about negative 273 degrees Celsius. And so that's pretty low, uh, very low. And hopefully you'll see the idea of extrapolating data. And what I mean by that is we won't even try to get anything that cold. We don't, we don't have that ability. The coldest we can get is this bath, which is dry ice. And so we just went back down to Spartan Final, grabbed a bunch of dry ice, uh, throw it into uh, some isopropyl alcohol. And so right now we're at negative 63 and a, and a half. And it's going to probably be around that as we do the experiment. So this is our coldest. This, this is our ice water at zero. This is our room temperature around 21 and our boiling water around 100. So just to collect our data first, uh, let me pull up page 57 and ask you to do the same. What you're going to do is work with me as we've been doing for these online labs that we kind of are a partner here and, and I'll kind of run through it and you be the partner of writing things down here. But you'll see here that there's a group of four and I'll just put it right here. There's a, a temperature and a pressure column. And then there are four places for you to write down the temperature and the pressure. And you'll see on the, on the side here it says dry ice, ice water, room, and boiling. That's the, the four baths. So I'm going to put it in this one first. Uh, this will be the dry ice bath. Then I'll put it in this one. This is the ice water bath. Then I'll put it in this one. This is the room temperature bath. And then finally the, the last one is the boiling water. And each of those I'll record down the temperature and pressure. And if you look at your chart, you will see that there is then another group of four right below it. Uh, this group of four will actually be the same experiment, but this is what we will do different. Uh, what we will do different, let me come back to the equation, is over here we will have a different number of molecules. And I'll show you how we're going to change the number of molecules when we do the second experiment. And when we do the second experiment, I'll just say, let's uh, increase the number of molecules. And so if you increase that number, you would have a smaller slope. So hopefully you'll see something like that. Uh, we could even increase them again and see a smaller slope. Um, or we could also decrease them, which we will see then a bigger slope than our uh, original one here. All right, and, and so this instrument here, and the reason it says here on the side, equalized at room temperature, that's how we change the, the number of, of molecules here. And so this container right now is about at room temperature. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of open this valve. And the gauge then will say about 15 PSI. And let me pause there for a moment. Notice I'm using a gauge that is in, oh, did I bump it? I think I'm okay. Uh, but I, I have a, a gauge that is in PSI. And the, even though it's not part of the metric system, our graphs are all formatted that way. And so these gauges that we have date from a long time ago, and so we formatted our graphs that way. So I'll make sure that I record the pressure in, in PSI and keep that in mind that we've got to get the, the pressure in PSI to follow the, the graphs as they are formatted in your book. All right, now when I go to the other baths, I'll just then open up the valve and I'll get a different number of molecules. So that's how we're going to get the different number of molecules. And that's why the second one says equalized in boiling water, okay? And I guess I said that out of turn because when I equalize it in boiling water, as we will soon see, we will get this one with a smaller number of molecules and a steeper slope. The ice water would be here and the dry ice would be there. In fact, I'll even just put dry ice should have the smallest slope and the boiling water then should have the biggest slope. And so I guess this would be ice water. And then this would be the room temperature. And this is the one I'm going to do first. Uh, then I'll just follow the order here. So then I'll do this one second. Then it says equalize in ice water. Okay. And so as you'll see when I equalize it, that'll change the number of molecules. And I'll basically just run the same experiment. So hopefully all of these that we do, and you can see that there's four of them. All of these 
should be straight lines. All of these should be confirming the ideal gas law. So like I said, when you make a graph, hopefully this is what you will see. You will see four straight lines as you plot this four set of data, and then you plot this four set of data, then you plot this four set of data, and then you plot this four set of data. And if they're a straight line, especially if it's a straight line four times, you will be confirming the ideal gas law. So like I said, that's half of the point of this lab. Whereas the other half of the point is to find absolute zero. And I'll show you how your data will do that in just a second. But now I think we're ready to collect data here. So let's go ahead and uh, begin. As I just pointed out, I have now equalized it at room temperature. So that's the first one here. And so why don't I take my first uh, reading here. And so I'm going to dunk it in here and look up at the clock. Uh, it needs to be left in for about 30 seconds. And um, these gauges are mechanical, so they have a tendency to stick. So it's a good idea maybe every 10 seconds to give it a little tap. Uh, not so much that you break anything, but just to kind of loosen it up. So it's been about 20 seconds. And you get look like that one moved a little bit. And so we're coming up on 30 seconds here. So I'm going to write down my first piece of data. And so the first one, I have a pressure of about 11. Let's see if this will stay on its own. OK. And it looks like 11.0. So the pressure is 11.0 in PSI. And the temperature is negative. 63.9 degrees Celsius. All right, I'll go to the next bath. You know, this bath's kind of messy. This is the harder of the uh, baths. And so let me just kind of let it run off a little bit. And then I'll help get rid of the gooey alcohol. And now we'll go to the, the next bath. All right, so same idea. Let me dunk it in here. Uh, it's actually warming up a, a, a little bit. In fact, before it sits here too long, let me break the ice ball that's going to form on the thing because it's pretty cold coming over here from the dry ice. Let me submerge it again. Okay, let me call that equivalent of about 10 seconds. So it's already been in there for 10 seconds. And so let's go another 20 seconds. So there's... 10 more, and almost there. And we'll take that then as a total of 30 right there. I'll give it uh, one more tap and say, OK, I'm getting a pressure of, and I'll call that 14.1, 14.1, and a temperature. And I'm sure this is going to stay at 0, but I'll just double check. Yeah, 0 degrees Celsius. All right, moving on to the next bath. And I will try to get a little bit of the ice off because I don't want the water temperature over here to change too much. But I got a, I got a lot of water in here for, for just that. And so I'll warm it up here a little bit. And so waiting for 30 seconds here and uh, not much difference between 0 and about 21 and so there we go almost there here we go and let's call that 15.2 at still 21 okay so I'm gonna write that number so uh, what I say, 15.2 at 21.0 degrees Celsius. And, and finally, the last bath of this set, because we're going to do you know, the same thing four times. And just as our first run through, you guys, I think, are seeing 
see how the pressure keeps going up, right? I'm, I'm making the molecules go faster and faster. Starting in the coldest one and coming over here, the dry ice, each time I put it in a slightly warmer bath. And so that's how we're going to get a, a pattern out of this. And I'm kind of burning my hand here. But I think we have the final temperature and uh, pressure here. And so let me call that a pressure of 19 and put it over here and say, okay, this is 19.0 and a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Now let's do it again, but this time change the number of molecules. And here's how we're going to change the number of molecules. We'll put it back in uh, the boiling water. So I'm going to hold it here in the, the boiling water. And uh, maybe I'll wait about 15 seconds or 20 seconds here. Let me get it back up to boiling. But the pressure is substantially higher than 15. If you remember from class, I said that the atmospheric pressure is, is 15. So we're at 19. So if I open this valve, what's going to happen is it's going to chase some molecules out. So remember the pressure... Uh, as I was saying in class, has to do with the speed of the molecules, that's its temperature, and the concentration of those molecules. So at this high temperature, if I just lower the concentration and let some out, I can get down to a pressure of 15. So that's what I'm really doing here. All right, so let's call this the beginning of uh, experiment number two. All right, so because I keep opening the valve, and I'll just do it one more time, and the atmospheric pressure is around 15, I should have... 15. Okay. All right. So here's my first reading. And so I'll come over here and say, all right, I have a pressure of 15.0 psi and a temperature of 100 degrees. All right. And I'll just go in reverse order going down here. I'll put it in this one. Oh, where are we? Okay. And so I'll just tap, tap, tap. So there's about five seconds. And so same logic. I'm just going to go through all uh, four baths. And each time record down temperature and pressure. And like I said, hopefully we'll get a nice uh, straight line here. So it's been 25 seconds. And one more time and take a reading and I'll just double check. Yep, still at 21 degrees. And, oh, 13. I'm going to guess at a 2. All right, so the pressure is 13.2 and the temperature is 21.0. All right, uh, moving on to the ice. And I should call it water ice, H2O ice. Since this is not dry ice, which, uh, by the way, if you're curious, uh, dry ice is carbon dioxide. So it's carbon dioxide that is so cold that it's turned into a solid. We usually think of it as being a liquid, but as I was pointing out, there are some things, and in lecture I said uh, aluminum. You don't usually think aluminum as a gas, but it could be. And likewise, you don't usually think of... Um, nitrogen as being a liquid or a solid, but it, but it could be if it was cold enough. And so those were our four states of matter that we were talking about. All right, so let me just double check. Uh, temperature still at zero. Good. Pressure now is 11.3. Yeah, let's call that... Should I go four? Let's go 11.3. All right, so 11.3. Okay, so the pressure is 11.3, temperature is zero. And so again, see how the pressure is going down? Here it went up and now it's going down. And again, that's the evidence of the kinetic theory model that the early scientists used to kind of piece together. These are really like little tiny BBs bouncing around. So let me try to remove the water and do one final reading here on our second set. And so into the real cold one here. And uh, you'll hopefully see it going down, down, down as it gets colder. And I should just check that the thermometer is still buried in there. Sometimes it falls out. Good. And we're at a negative 
63.9 still again, so okay, hasn't really changed. And we're almost at 30 seconds. Here we are approaching 30 seconds. Okay, there now. Well, let me take a, a final reading. So this is a pressure of 8.8. And I think it'll stay there. So my pressure is 8.8 .8 PSI and my temperature is negative. I said 64.0 now, so somewhere around 64.0 or 63.9. And as long as it's sitting there, I'm going to take this a little bit out of order. Let's do the, the last one because it's already in the dry ice. That's why I decided to go, you know, I'll just leave it there. And so let's come over and do the fourth experiment before we do the third experiment. And so let me grab the, the release here. And uh, I'll even kind of hold it in, in your direction. And so remember that the pressure has to do with the speed of the molecules and the concentration of them. And right now, the uh, speed of them should be really small because they're in a cold, cold environment. Um, so to get it up to a pressure of 15, I should increase the, the concentration so I have more of them. And that's why I was saying in that graph, this would be the one of the, of the smaller slope. And this one you got to be a little careful with and open it a few times because every time you let some more molecules in, they're at room temperature. And so to give them a chance to cool down, you can even get more in there. So this is the one that we're trying to pack with the most molecules. But I think that's the most I can get. So if I turn it my way, hopefully it'll say pressure of 15. Okay, good. And temperature of negative 63.9, it says. All right, so over here, temperature negative 63.9 and a pressure uh, of 15, because I equalized it there. All right, so let me come over to the other baths. And so as I leave this bath, let me again take an extra moment to try to get all the uh, isopropyl alcohol off especially before I bring all this isopropyl alcohol over to the flame. That would be fun on camera. I'll watch the whole thing catch on fire. Okay, so here's the uh, next one here. Uh, this is the one, as I said, when you go from there to there, it's really cold. And so maybe the first thing I ought to do is just make sure that I break off this forming ice ball around it because kind of makes it insulating and it takes a while for it to warm up to the to the ice water with that sitting on there. Okay. So, tap, tap, tap. And uh, I think you can see the pressure's already gone up uh, because, again, I have moved it from something that was really cold to something that's just semi-cold ice water here. And uh, I didn't take a good look of when I put it in. I think we're at 20 seconds plus. So let me go a little bit more. And uh, maybe we could tell by seeing if the pressure gauge even moves anymore. But as long as the pressure gauge gets pretty much stable, we know that no matter how long we leave it, we're going to do it. So I'll just do one more. I'll just double check that we're at zero degrees still. Yeah, we are. All that ice in there, I would expect that. And so we're at a pressure of... 20 and it looks right on the nose 20.0 so coming over here I will say the pressure is 20.0 and the temperature is zero degrees and so if we warm it up again so I'm gonna put it over here and uh, wait uh, 30 seconds and uh, as I said before this isn't a big warm-up going from just ice water to room temperature water uh, but it's probably 21 degrees. I'll just kind of double check if this is still at 21 degrees. Yep, still at 21 degrees. And we're about 23 seconds. So about seven more seconds here and counting down. All right, so we'll just take that. And it looks like, ooh, 21 point, let me call it seven. And so 21. 
0.7 is the uh, pressure and the temperature is 21.0. Okay, and then the final reading here for this fourth experiment. Now remember, we still got to do the third one here. Uh, but let me drop it in here. Uh, take a look at the clock and I'm gonna rearrange my hands. So I don't get too hot on my hand. But uh, let me hold it here for 30 seconds. Looks like we've been 15 now. And this might be a nice question to think about. Which one's going to give me the highest and the lowest pressure? It's actually one of your discussion questions here. So remember the pressure comes from temperature, that's how fast they're moving, and how many. So right now they're moving really fast, so I would expect this to be a high pressure. But in addition to that, this is the highest pressure of all 16 measurements because I have the most molecules because I equalized it over there in the dry ice. And now I made all those molecules go really fast. And so that's the reason. So they ask uh, which one is it and for what reason. They also ask the reverse of this, but let me not answer that. I'll let you think about which one's going to have the lowest overall pressure reading. Okay, but uh, that being said, uh, why don't I take my reading now? I've been way over 30 seconds here. And so let's call it 26.9. And so coming over to here, the pressure is 26.9 and the temperature is 100 degrees. And so the one I'm missing is equalized in ice. Ah, so let's put it in here. And this will take a while. And I already gave you a little bit of a hint on the homework questions. That is, which one is at a highest overall reading? And hopefully you, you said, well, it's when it's boiling because that's its fastest one. Yeah, true. But also, it's the one that is boiling and it's equalized in the dry ice because the dry ice gave us enough the most molecules. So this is going to be our highest overall one. And the lowest one should be over here where we got it at the lowest temperature. But we also equalized it in the boiling water. So the boiling water gave us the fewest number of molecules. So this one here has the lowest number of molecules as well as then when we put it in the dry ice at its lowest speed. Now, I probably said too much because you were supposed to think through that one, but I, I couldn't resist. It's kind of fun to talk about that one. All right, so with that in mind, this has been here plenty of time, long enough. Uh, let me go ahead and open the valve. And uh, a lot of molecules came racing out because we were, we were at a pressure of about 20. And so now let's do our fourth and, and, and final one. And so if I write down what I have now, um, let's see, uh, dry ice, this would be ice water. So I'm at a pressure of 15, of course, and a zero degrees for the, the temperature. And uh, maybe I'll go uh, this direction first. Go to the dry ice. And so I'll put it in the dry ice here. And that should be cooling it down, so the molecules should be going slower. And then hopefully the pressure gauge is going down. It's worth saying it again, that the pressure is determined from two reasons. So the first is how fast are they moving, that's its temperature. And the second is the, the concentration, that's the number of atoms per, per volume, okay? And so in this case, I'm not changing the concentration because the valve's closed, but I am changing the temperature. And so hopefully these will be all nice straight lines. All right, so it's been about uh, 30 seconds here. And so let's take a temperature and pressure reading. This looks like 11, it's called 11.8. I'll put it on here. <laughs> 11. Uh, point 0.8 is the uh, pressure and the temperature I just looked over there was a negative 64.1. Okay, and then make sure it's all good and wiped off. 
two more readings here. Uh, let's go to the just regular water. And that should be warming it up. In fact, it's see if an ice ball or any of the alcohol, I didn't wipe it off very good, so I got quite a bit of alcohol on there. So don't have to worry about an ice ball on this one because it'll form at first, but then the water will, will take care of it as opposed to going to that one. Guess I could have avoided the ice ball by going in a kind of a different order. But I like to put them in the order that of their temperature. I think it's easier to understand and see what's going on. Okay, and so now I've got a pressure of, looks like about a, I'll call it a 16.3. And so 16.3, and I should double check the, the temperature. 21, yep, point zero, good. And then finally, our last reading of our 16 readings is back here into the boiling water. And good, our timing's working out just about right. We're getting low. Well, it's got a little bit more, but it's uh, just about out of water before it all boils away here. And a couple more seconds. And by the way, when we do this face-to-face, -face, so that's why we have a couple of these going on with water, and we can then add water to one, and students can go to the other one for a while. So we get a couple of these going, a couple of these, because it gets real busy with, with everybody in here going along. All right, and so our, our final reading here looks like 20, let's call it 20.2 at 100 degrees here. So uh, 20.2 at... 800 degrees here. So there's the, the raw data and I'm going to let you do most of the, the rest of the lab yourself. Let me turn off the, the boiling water here while I continue to finish up the lab. And so go ahead and transfer those numbers on into your, your, your table here because then go ahead and make a graph. And so on page 58 you have this nice piece of graph paper and on the vertical axis is temperature and on the horizontal axis is pressure in PSI and temperature in, in Celsius. And zero degrees is way up here, zero degrees Celsius. Uh, here's a, a hundred degrees up near the, the top here. But your first set of data right here when you, when you put it in will hopefully, as I said, look something a little bit uh, like this. And so maybe you will have uh, your, let's see, your highest temperature is 100 and your pressure is 19. So maybe I'll we'll put 19 over here. Uh, then you'll have this 21. Maybe I'll put it there. Uh, then you'll have your ice water. Uh, then you'll have your negative 64-ish here. But I'm hoping what you will see then is four dots that look like a straight line. Okay, that's the part that I was saying that this should look like then the ideal gas law. So then take your ruler and go ahead and make it a straight line. Ah, and here's this word I've been using, extrapolate. Well, what I mean by that is we've recorded data between here and here we're going to say if you continued, it would go on and cross this axis. This is important because this is where you can answer that first uh, discussion question, which it says, what did you get for the absolute zero? You see, when you extend this line down and where it crosses, when it crosses the vertical axis, what you're saying here is that the horizontal axis is zero. You're saying that the pressure would be zero if you continued to cool it down. Now, again, we didn't, but if you did, so that's why it's called extrapolating. If we continued with this pattern and we eventually got to zero pressure, well, how could you get zero pressure? And there's the answer. There's the brilliance of Calvin. You could only get zero pressure if the molecules had stopped moving. Ah, and so what temperature would that be? And you could just read it right off the graph. So somewhere down here, 
Maybe yours is going to say something like negative 298. Now, let me emphasize a perfect set of experiments with perfect equipment. And I know from years of doing this that ours is off a little bit. And then if you have a line that's off a little bit and you extend it way down, it gets off quite a bit. So that's the dangers of what we call extrapolating data is the further you get away from your measurement, the less confidence you, you have in it. That's why interpolating data is much better than extrapolating data. Interpolating data, by the way, is making a, a, a guess at the number between your data points. So that way you've measured things above and below, and, and you're pretty confident that it would be somewhere in between there. But extrapolating, especially if you're off just a little bit, boy, if you go a long distance of extrapolating it, you're, you're going to be off. So our equipment is not the best in the world. So a perfect measurement would be negative 273, as I've been saying in class. Ours is going to be something off of that. But also, hopefully, you will do this four times. OK? And so do each of your experiments or plot each of your experiments and then see where they cross. And so hopefully you will be able then to answer this first question and maybe it'll make more sense then when on page 59 the first one says what are your four values of absolute zero? Okay, so what did you get? Now that we've done this, I collected the data and you're analyzing it, what, see what you get and then average yours. And then it asks for that accepted value, and that's that negative 273. So it'd be fun to see how close we as a team here get to negative 273. And then, of course, these other questions I essentially answered. Uh, there is one, though, I think it's the last two that I probably should say a little bit more, because as I mentioned in some other uh, uh, labs, these questions that the author uh, creates, I think, are really good questions, but they're, they're not always worded so clearly. And so now that I've helped you on most of them, I will continue and, and, and go to this second to last one. It says, at which point on the graph would the temperature be that you equalized it? And